Final leg, here today to talk about the top athletes of the past decade from 2010 all the way to 2019. So many athletes had careers that defined the sport and really left an impact in track and field. I'm gonna give you guys a top 12, really like a top 19, have seven honorable mentions, but before I give you guys my personal list, go in the comments below. Let me know who your favorite athletes were from this past decade, whether on the men's side, the women's side, on the field or on the track. Let me know who you guys have for the past decade. Jumping into my honorable mentions, first I have Sally Pearson from Australia in the 100 meter hurdles, Olympic champion from 2012. She's also a two time world champion from 2011 and 2017. Also got a silver at the 2013 world championships. Indoors at the 60 meter hurdles, she won gold at the 2012 world championships and got silver at the 2014 world championships. So great accolades, two times Commonwealth Games champion, and has a personal best in the 100 meter hurdles of 12.28 seconds. That ranks her number six all time and is a third fastest for the decade and she also has a 60 meter hurdle personal best of 7.73 seconds also number six all time indoors and also the fourth fastest time in the decade so Sally Pearson from Australia moving over to Renola Villani from France in the pole vault he has the 2012 Olympic Games gold medal he also got the silver medal at the Rio Olympic Games in 2016 he got a silver medal at the world championships in Moscow 2013 and three bronze medals in 2011 15 and 2017 he's a three-time world World Indoor Champion 2012, 16, and 18, and a six-time European Champion, three times outdoors, three times indoors. A seven-time Diamond League Champion, one of the longest records for any athlete in any event in the Diamond League, and also has the world record from 2014 at 6.16 meters. So Renaud Villanine from France. From Great Britain, I have Jessica Ennis in those multi-events, the 2012 Olympic Champion, 2016 Olympic Silver Medalist, and two-time World Champion from 2012. 2011 and 2015. She also has world indoor gold from 2010 and a silver medal from 2012. She's also a European champion from 2010 as well. She has three of the top six performances all time in the heptathlon with a personal best of 6,955 points. That makes her number seven all time in the heptathlon. She also is number four all time in the indoor pentathlon. So Jessica Ennis from Great Britain. In the discus from Germany, I have Robert Harding. He dominated the early part of this decade, 2011, 12, and 13. He got gold, the two world championships and those Olympics. He also got the European championships in 2012 and 2014. Personal best of 70.66 meters, which is number 20 all time. He actually went undefeated between 2011 and 2012. And between 2010 and 2014, he only lost nine out of 72 finals in the discus throw. So definitely decade worthy, my honorable mention. From Colombia, I have Katarine E. Barguin in that triple jump. The Olympic champion in 2016, Olympic silver in 2012 world champion in 2013 and 2015 as well as silver in 2017 she got bronze in 2011 and 2019 so the medals really stacking up for her personal best of 15.31 meters which makes her number six all time in the triple jump and six time diamond league champion five times at the triple jump and one time at the long jump so from Colombia, i have katarina ibarguin heading down to new zealand i have valerie adams in the shot put so hard to put her as an honorable mention she's an olympic champion from 2012 an olympic silver in 2016 and a two-time world champion at 2011 and 2013. Three-time world indoor champion 2010, 12, and 14 and Commonwealth gold in 2010 and 2014. Five-time Diamond League champion winner, again one of the most highlighted Diamond League championship winners and 15 out of the top 16 throws in this past decade including 21.24 meters in 2011 which makes her number 22 all time and it has to be noted a lot of the marks ahead of her are probably associated with doping. They're still on the books, but Valerie Adams, another honorable mention. Finally, for honorable mentions, I have Wade Van Nieker from South Africa. Later part of the decade, he really dominated. 2015, he got the world championship win and also defended it in 2017. He really had that big mark in 2016 at the Olympics, getting the gold medal in the world record of 43.03 seconds, breaking Michael Johnson's world record. He has a 300 meter world best at 30.81 and only lost two at out of 18 400 meter races between 2015 and 2017. So really high quality Wade Van Nieker for my honorable mention. Now let's really jump into the top 12. First at number 12, I have Brittany Reese from the United States in the long jump. She really was a highlight from this decade, absolutely dominating from the start. She has an Olympic gold medal from 2012 in London and Olympic silver from Rio in 2016. A three time world champion in 2011, 13 and 2017 and a three time world in 
indoor champion from 2010, 12, and 2016. She also got silver at the World Indoors in 2018. She's a two-time Diamond League winner, and in this decade, she has eight of the top 14 jumps, highlighted by 7.31 meters in 2016, which makes her number nine all-time in the long jump. So huge, huge accolades there. Indoors, she has two of the top three jumps this decade, and a personal best of 7.23 meters, which makes her number four all-time. So Brittany Reese coming in at number 12 for my all-decade list. Coming in at my number 11, I have Allison Felix. Oh, this is going to hurt. I know people are going to hate me for this only at number 11, but she is obviously one of the most decorated athletes in track and field history. Specifically this decade, though, she's easily one of the best. She managed to get the Olympic championship gold medal in the 200 meters after a couple Olympics, only getting silver. Got it in 2012. She got the world championship win in the 400 meters in 2015, and she got silver medals in 2011 and 2016 in the 400 meters, bronze medal in 2011 at the 200 meters and at the 400 meters in 2015. She has a 200 meter personal best of 21.69 from 2012, which makes her number six all time in the event. And in the 400 meters, a personal best of 49.26 seconds makes her number 20 all time in the 400 meters. Great accolades, but not done yet. She's a 200 meter Diamond League champion from 2010, 2014, and 2015, and also the 400 meter Diamond League champion from 2010. She also has all those relay accolades, which she is very well known for. In the 4x1, she has gold in 2011, 2012, 2016, 2017, and in 2012, which currently stands as the world record for the women's 4x1. She also has 4x400 meter gold in every single major championships except 2013 when she got injured in the finals of the 200 meters that year, but specifically the Beijing 4x4. She managed to split 47.72 seconds on her leg, which is the third fastest this relay leg in the history of the 4x4. So really significant. Can't forget about that mixed relay goal that she got in Doha last year. So Allison Felix, my number 11. Moving into the top 10, I have Sandra Perkovic from Croatia in that discus throw. Two-time Olympic champion in the discus throw 2012 and 2016. Two-time world champion from 2013 and 2017. And also has a silver and bronze at the world championships from 2015 and 2019 respectively. She's a five-time European champion champion as well, all from 2010 all the way up to 2018 consecutively, and a six-time Diamond League winner, one of the most Diamond League winners in the history of the Diamond League. She also has 15 of the top 16 throws in this decade for the discus throw. That is extreme dominance, and 35 of the top 50 throws in the decade, so really highlighting it with a personal best of 71.41 meters, which makes her number 15 all-time in the discus throw. Behind some ladies, just like Valerie Adams, who are, might be suspected for doping, but again, really dominant Sandra Perkovic from Croatia in that discus throw, my number 10. Moving up to number nine, could be controversial, but I have Castor Semenya from South Africa in that 800 meters. She's a two-time Olympic champion, 2012 and 2016. She's also a two-time world champion from 2011 and 2017. She also got 1500 meter bronze in 2017 as well. She got the Commonwealth Games gold in 2018 with the 800 meters and the 1500 meters, and also has a top nine fastest times from this past decade, highlighted by a personal best of 154.25 seconds, which is number four all time in the 800 meters. So my number nine, Caster Semenya from South Africa. Moving up to number eight, I can feel the surprise already. David Rudisha, my number eight from Kenya, the most dominant 800 meter runner that we've seen in the history of track and field and clearly from this decade. He is the Olympic champion from 2012 and 2016, two-time Olympic champion, also the two-time world champion from 2011 and 2015 the world record holder we all know that race from the london olympics in 2012 140.91 from those 2012 olympics and that race is probably the greatest 800 meter race in the history of the event he dragged everyone to personal best in that race huge performance that he really set up there he also has three of the fastest times in the history of the 800 meters not only the decade but history of the 800 meters of course i mentioned the world record 140.91 but also the other two marks are world records as well, which he broke in a span of seven days, seven days apart from each other. 141.09 in Berlin, August 22nd in 2010. Then seven days later on August 29th, 2010, he ran 141.01. Again, two world records that he broke in the span of a week. He's a two-time Diamond League champion and he has six of the top times in the decade. Also six of the top 10 times in history. So my number eight, David Rudisha from Kenya. Over to number seven, I have Christian Taylor from the United States dominated this decade in the triple jump like no 
other two-time Olympic champion in 2012 and 2016. He has a four-time world championship gold medals from 2011, 2015, 2017, and 2019. He's a seven-time Diamond League winner as well, one of the most since the Diamond League started in 2010, and has the second best jump in the history of the event from 2015, that 18.21 meter jump at those world championships, only eight centimeters away from that world record set back in 1995. He also has been over 18 meters five times in this decade, which includes auxiliary jumps, which are the jumps within the entire competition. And that's the most for any jumper in the history of the triple jump, not only this decade, but the history of the triple jump. Before that, the most ever was Jonathan Edwards. He had done it four times over 18 meters. He's one of the few people to jump 18 meters in the same competition. Remember in the Lausanne Diamond League back in 2015, he jumped 1802 and 1806. And also to note at the Doha Diamond League that same year in 2015, he jumped 1802 and lost to Pablo Pedro Pachardo, the only person to jump 18 meters and lose a competition. He also to boot has a world indoor championship silver medal from 2012. So my number seven, Christian Taylor from the United States. Now at number six, I have Mo Farah from Great Britain. I know so many people are probably screaming at me right now, only putting him number six, but of course he is the most dominant athlete this decade in the 5,000 and the 10,000 meters. Things really set things off in the 2010 European Championships where he won double gold in the 5,000 and the 10,000 meters. 2011 though was the start of his run. Between 2011 and 2017, out of the 12 available golds in the 5,000 and the 10,000 meters, Mo Farah won 10 of those gold medals. The only times that he lost were in 2011 at the 10,000 meters in Daegu and then 2017 at the 5,000 meters in London. So absolutely dominant, getting gold medals basically at command. He's a 2017 Diamond League champion at 5,000 meters and he also has European records at 1,500 meters, two miles, 10,000 meters, half marathon and the marathon. So really showing that range of distance from 1,500 meters all the way up to the marathon, not just the 5K and the 10K. His 5K and 10K times are nothing crazy, not earth shattering, and the 5K is number 34 all time, 10K is number 16 all time, so nothing crazy like some of the other faster times, but his dominance is unmatched. That's why I have him at number six, Mo Farah from Great Britain. All right, let's get into that top five. First off, I have Ashton Eaton from the United States in those multi-events. Of course, a two-time Olympic champion 2012 and 2016. Also a two-time world champion from 2013 and 2015. Also got silver at the 2011 championships behind Trey Hardy that year. He has a three-time world indoor championship gold at the indoor heptathlon, having it in 2012, 2014, and 2016. So really dominating the gold medals through the decade in the multi-events. He set the world record twice during his reign. In 2012, he got that world record at the Olympic trials, 9,019 points, huge performance there. He followed that up and improved in 2015 at the world championships, getting 9,045 points, really dominating. We remember his performances there, specifically that 400 meters when he ran 45 flat. Amazing performance there. He currently is number two all time. Of course, Kevin Mayer broke the world record in 2018, but two world records along with two Olympic championship golds and two world championship golds as well. He also has the world indoor heptathlon world record at 6,645 points, which he set in 2012. That currently stands for today. He has four of the top 11 scores in decathlon history. Of course, those two world records that I mentioned, and also five of the top seven indoor heptathlon performances ever. So really, really strong performances he has. Of course, he suddenly retired after 2016, went on to go do some business ventures, still in the world of track and field, but his career is unmatched from 2010 all the way to 2016. My number five, Ashton Ian from the United States. Coming in at my number four, I have Shelly Ann Fraser Price from Jamaica. Not only of the decade, but my opinion, she's the greatest 100 meter sprinter in the sport of track and field, in history of track and field. Olympic champion in 2012 and a three time world champion from 2013, 15, and 2019. Remember, she gave birth in 2017, came back and got that gold medal in 2019. She's also the 200 meter world champion from 2013 in Moscow. So got that 100, 200 double. And she also is a 200 meter Olympic silver medalist in 2012 behind Allison Felix that year. She's a four time Diamond League winner, three times at 100 meters and one time at 200 meters. So one of the few athletes to get a Diamond League double. And she has a personal best of 10.70 seconds, which makes her number four all time and equals the fastest time of the decade set by Elaine Thompson as well. She has 10 of the top 20 
20 times in this past decade in that 100 meters. Super dominant and also has gone sub 10 on 12 occasions throughout the entire decade unmatched by anyone else between 2010 to 2019. And we can't forget about her four by 100 meter relay accolades, got gold in 2013, 15, and 2019 this last year, and silver in 2011, 2012, and 2016. She also got indoor gold at the 60 meters, running 6.98 seconds in Sopot 2014, which ranks number eight all time in the 60 meter dash. So Shelly Ann Fraser Price, my number four for this decade. Getting into my top three, I have Elliot Kip Choge from Kenya, the greatest marathoner, not only of this decade, but probably of all time in the history of the marathon. He's only started running marathons in 2013 at the Hamburg Marathon. He went on to suffer his first loss at the Berlin Marathon that year, but only behind Wilson Kipsang's world record at the time. And Kip Choge would run 2.04.05, making him number five all time at the time. So really setting off his career on a high note. He went to Berlin in 2015, improved his personal best to two hours and four minutes but in that race he had the insoles coming out of his shoes after about 10k through that race so showing his dominance running extremely fast while suffering some setbacks in 2016 he won the london marathon and then won the rio olympics that year as well so really showing he could do the marathon majors and get some world and olympic wins there 2017 was really big because that was the first attempt at breaking two set up by nike he unfortunately didn't get it he ran two hours and 25 seconds just off the two hour barrier but of course we know he would do it later on 2018 though really big year of course he won london again but he went to berlin marathon that year and set a huge world record of two hours one minute and 39 seconds taking a huge chunk off of the world record broke it by one minute and 18 seconds which is the largest margin the marathon record had ever been broken 2019 just last year he went for that sub two marathon again and this time he was successful he managed to run one hour 59.40 seconds huge huge performance really breaking barriers in what's possible not only in the marathon but in the sport so I have him at number three Elia Kipchoge from Kenya now getting into that top two first I have Anita Vidalczyk from Poland in that hammer throw many people are probably surprised I put her at number two but look at the career that she had she is probably the most dominant athlete this decade on the women's side the two-time Olympic champion in 2012 and 2016 the three-time world champion from 2013 15 and 2017 she also also is a four-time European champion from 2012, 14, 16, and 18. So she has all golds at this point. She hasn't lost a single championship meet. She broke the world record four times in the hammer throw. The first time in 2014, then in 2015, and twice in 2016. One time at the Olympics and one time after that. The current world record, which she set after the Olympics in 2016, stands at 82.98 meters. Amazing performance for her. But Let's get into the real nitty gritty of it. She owns the top 15 throws in the history of the event, all from this decade. Top 15 throws in the history of the event. Owns 27 of the top 30 throws in the history of this event. So only three other throws in the top 30 don't belong to Anita Vidalczyk. She also went undefeated in the hammer throw between 2015 and 2017. So really dominating that entire time. And between 2012 and 2018, so a seven year period she only lost 13 out of 80 competitions so seven full years of competing only 13 losses out of 80 competitions so the only real knock you can have against Vidalczyk is that she didn't win gold in 2019 and she didn't even compete she had surgery earlier in the season so she couldn't compete but she's going into the 2020 Olympics as the clear favorite in the hammer throw so my number two the number one female athlete of the decade I have Anita Vidalczyk from Poland in that women's hammer throw now for my top athlete of the decade and of course the top male athlete of the decade, I, I bet you guys can probably guess, it's Usain Bolt from Jamaica in that 100 and 200 meters. Absolutely dominated. Of course, we know his world records came before the decade in 2008 and 2009, but 2010 to 2017 was just as dominant. He won Olympic gold in 2012 and 2016. Not in one event, not in two events, but three events, the 100, 200, and 4x1. So six golds at the Olympics between 2012 and 2016. He's a three-time world champion at 200 meters. 
2011, 2013, and 2015, and a two-time world champion at 100 meters, having won it in 2013 and 2015. 2017, of course, the last championships that he competed at, he got 100 meter bronze behind Christian Coleman and Justin Gatlin at the time. He also has four by 100 meter gold in 2011, 2012, 2013, 2015, and 2016. So we are talking about absolute dominance. He has the fastest 100 meter time for the decade. Of course, we know he has a world record at 9.58 from 2009, but 9.63 from 2012 at the London Olympic Games. That is the fastest time from the decade. And that race is probably one of the greatest 100 meter races in the history of the 100 meters. We also has the second fastest time in the 200 meters. Again, of course, he has the world record of 19.19 from 2009, but his 19.3 3-2 at the London 2012 Olympics is only behind Johan Blake's 19.26 from 2011. So Usain Bolt, again, really dominating this decade. And between 2010 and 2017, out of 55 races at 100 meters and 200 meters, excluding heats and semis, he only lost six of those races, six out of 55 races throughout the entire decade. Only lost to Tyson Gay, Johan Blake, Justin Gatlin, and Christian Coleman. So we're talking about some high quality guys. All all nine, seven guys, those are the only people to beat Usain Bolt throughout his entire decade career. And his only real blunders, of course, of a false start in 2011 when Johan Blake went on to win the world championships there. And he didn't compete as often on the circuit. Of course, we know there's some people who say he ducks and this, that, whatever, but we can't deny it. Usain Bolt, he is the greatest athlete of the past decade from 2010 all the way to 2017. He is my number one male athlete of the decade, athlete of the decade, Usain Bolt from Jamaica. All right, so those are my athletes of the decade. I gave you 19 names. Of course, of course, of course, I know people are probably going to be mad or probably going to be confused, this, that, whatever. Go in the comments below. Let me know who your top athletes of the decade were. Let me know if I have a different order than you do. Let me know who you guys have. Make sure you guys like the video. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. We'll be back again in the next video. Thanks.